Hello everybody, let us consider various shapes of cells we can see in histological sections. Although we should uh, take in ma mind that uh, in histological sections we can see only two-dimensional projections of the real three-dimensional objects. So, let's start with a spherical shape. So, when the cell has a shape of a sphere. We'll always provide examples from human body. So this would be mature oocyte with the uh, spherical shape. Let's consider also the size in this case because uh, the mature oocyte has a diameter of uh, approximately uh, 110 micrometers, so it could be theoretically observed with the naked eye. There are also other cells, mainly blood elements that are spherical, round shaped, such as. Uh, my next example, which will be a blood monocyte, which is the largest cell of the circulating peripheral blood. With a diameter ranging between 15 to 20 micrometers. A similar would be ovoid shape or ellipsoid shape. such as mast cells of connective tissues that have many granules that could be released upon activation. So this will be ovoid, ovoid shape. An example would be mast cell or heparinocyte. That's the same A cell from the connective tissues. Another common uh, shape would be polyhedric or po polyhedral that's how a hepatocyte looks like hepatocytes are epithelial cells of liver with a diameter of roughly 25 micrometers which makes it like an average uh, cell of the human body because that's the mean diameter of the human cells. I will Let me also mention a very characteristic shape of red blood cells which have a form of biconcave discs so The typical diameter is 7.5 micrometers, this will be the side view. And having red blood cells in most, most uh, uh, tissue sections makes it a suitable scale. So this is a red blood cell or an erythrocyte. Let's mention other examples. Next one would be columnar shape. And a good example would be enterocytes. That's epithelial cells lining uh, small intestine and large intestine. So we can see one of these one, one of the dim dimensions exceeds the other dimensions. Unlike cuboidal shape, where you have comparable diameter in all three dimensions,
see how the shape of the cell, uh, of the nucleus, also corresponds somehow with the shape of the cell. Okay, so this would be cuboidal. And a good example would be follicular cells of the thyroid gland or type 2 type 2 pneumocytes aligning the lung alveoli. Another shape would be flat or squamous. These cells could be so flat that the only region that is well visible in the routine sections in the optical microscope would be the, the region with the nucleus, which is bulging here. So that's squamous. A good example would be mesothelium. That's the epithelium lining, for example, the abdominal cavity, or type 1 pneumocytes. Lining the lung alveoli, we are literally breathing th through these cells. Another shape would be elongated. Spindle shaped, or spindle like shaped shape. Spindle like shape, such as in smooth muscle cells. Let's proceed to examples of uh, cells having various processes. So I'll start with the neurons, with nerve cells that have some processes carrying the action potentials towards the cell body. These processes are called dendrites and there is one cell process carrying the action potential away from the cell body into the periphery. That's the axon. So we have a meta metabolic center of the cell, the cell body, and the processes. We can call it stellate. Shape, uh, which comes from the, uh, from the Latin word for star, stella. Uh, because it resembles a star, we have processes. And an example with stellate shape with processes. And a good example would be a multipolar neuron of spinal cord or brain. Another cell with processes would be an osteocyte, a mature cell of bone tissue, which is sending many branching processes into the bone matrix, through the microscopic canals of the bone matrix, that are extensively branching through the bone canaliculi, and we call the cell osteocyte. So this will be a bone osteocyte. And this pattern is uh, sometimes called dendritic, which I believe comes from a Greek word for, for tree. Another cell that has this uh, term in, a, in its terminology is immune cell that is offering antigens to other immune cells and it's called dendritic cell. There's a nucleus usually with an incision etc. 
cell, this is a dendritic immune cell that could be found in lymphoid follicles. Another characteristic cell with processes would be one of the neurons of the cerebellum. It has re large cell body and extensive branching of dendrites having thousands or receiving thousands of synapses we call it pear pear like shape and this example is a purkinia neuron that could be found in the second layer of the cortex of cerebellum another shape of uh, another shape would be the one that resembles a pyramid it looks more or less like triangle in the in the section so we call it pyramidal and that's how the serous uh, cells which are actually glands um, of of the pancreas look like I mean the exocrine portion of pancreas or serous cells of um, the parotid gland also neurons could have this pyramidal shape right with their branching processes in cell body These are, they are even called pyramidal neurons they occur in the in the brain cortex another shape would be the one with uh, a narrow ba basal compartment and somehow dilated apical compartment. Here we got somehow compressed nucleus because most of the cytoplasm is filled with granules of mucin, mucin. And they resemble a goblet. So they are called goblet cells they occur um, in the among the enterocytes in the uh, small and large intestine they also occur in the epithelium of uh, respiratory passages such as nasopharynx trachea and bronchi of course in reality these shapes are somehow idealized and uh, they are many more, much more shapes in the human body, but that could serve as a first introduction into the terminology.